Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I am Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and this is episode 29. It's June 3rd, 2014 though, and I really thought I was going to be doing this last week around the 25th or 26th, but that fell through because I had a really busy weekend and I had a lot going in my life, a lot going on in my life, including this. Natalie Christine D'Angelo. Station It's my daughter graduating. And uh, yes, she graduated on the 29th, which I thought I was going to be having two wonderful things happen on the 29th. My daughter graduating and the release of the Arena Commander, which would not even rate on that list if it wasn't from Chris Roberts. But one went through and the other did not. And in my opinion, the better one went through. So what's been going on in the last two weeks, and I'm just going to be very brief in this episode because I know we're all dying for the go, no go vote um, to be made over at CIG. We're all dying to get into the arena commander. And really, until that happens, the only big news is tomorrow is the last episode of Wingman's Hangar, which is going to be sad to see Eric go, but I'm kind of excited to see what CIG brings forth. So let's go back a couple of weeks. Four Horsemen came in first place. And I believe that put two people, two groups, into the uh, third place pool back then. And I think those two groups were the Talon Group and Infinite Shoe Monkey. And great people bringing it on, but the Four Horsemen had it all when they were um, displaying their ship. And let me tell you, that was one of the ones I really wanted to get the save. They did and they're moving on into the finals. And although it's not the most beautiful ship, it's probably the most well done ship in, um, until this week, that is. And then I watched the latest episode and saw that Three Dingo, of course, missed a deadline. That's so sad to see them out of it and you know having to go for third place when I think if they just fixed a couple of the frequency items, they would probably have been the winner. But you know, I still out of the politics of the game. I just of the whole uh, next great starship just reporting what happened so they missed the deadline and were disqualified and that left two um, companies to compete against each other and Shimapan and of course the Shard Collective. Shard Collective was another one I've been pulling for I love that gunship uh, uh, a, um, H64 Apache style look to it actually even more so it looks just bad it looks badass. It looks like something in this universe, the Star Citizen universe, that you would be scared of. And also definitely something I want in my hangar. So I got my wish. I got the two companies I really liked, Shard Collective and the Four Horsemen competing against each other. And honestly, you know, something that was said on the show this week is something I wish I could see. The exterior... <laughs> of the Shard Collective and the interior of the Four Horsemen. That would be epic, but one of those teams is going to win. And one, hopefully, we could still buy their ship through some kind of online store or in-game store that they let us do that in. So that is going to be the big event for this week. Actually, this week has so many big events rolled into it, I don't know what to say. It's going to be one of the biggest weeks for CIG in a long time. We know that Arena Commander is coming out. So we're going to take a step back, go back to Thursday, and relive those last few moments of us waiting and waiting and waiting, and then getting that epic letter from Chris saying, you know, we have some real blockades to pushing this out. It's crashing all the time doing this, or possibly doing that, crashing a lot more often when you're doing this, or less often when you're doing that, and we don't want to release in its current state. So they delayed it. And again, they delayed it on Friday. And again, they delayed it yesterday with a promise that by this morning they would have a go, no go meeting. Well, not a promise, but a statement. And that came and went and hasn't happened. So Arena Commander currently is in a stable build. How do I know this? It's something that Ben put out in the developers forums in the RSI website, right? So we're waiting for them to say, yes, it's ready to go. 
And I'm wondering what they're waiting for. And, you know, is it something on the back end, not in the module itself? Is it being able to have the people in the right place at the right time? I don't know because I don't work there. The most I do is this video and talk to a bunch of people that work at CIG to help my videos, you know, help my program move forward. I'm praying that we get it soon as I've gotten my X-55 and it's all ready to start flying around my Hornet, my Aurora, and my 300 in the Van Duels form. I'm praying to God I'm one of the first, you know, few thousand that get into multiplayer, but I doubt it. I got in in August and there's so many other people that were wise enough to pledge before me that deserve to get their numbers added to that pool of first um, to be able to play the multiplayer part of the game. So I'm excited about that. What's the second thing? So we have Arena Commander, we have the end of an era. Wingman's Hangar, Eric Wingman Peterson, who from the beginning of, well, not the beginning of the project, but near the beginning of the project, um, in one of the stretch goals promised a weekly show that was supposed to be just a few minutes long. And that became Wingman's Hangar. And for 72 episodes, Eric has provided us with um, some very awesome moments. And the next show that we see, the one that we're going out with a bang, is going to be reliving some of those most memorable moments. And, you know, Eric, thank you very much for doing the show, for bringing all the humor and all the answers to our questions to the screen. And now you get to do what you were hired for to make the, you know, <laughs> to make the best damn space simulator ever. And I hope to God that you not having to do this means that we get things faster. And if we don't, there's gonna be a lot of people on your tail. So Eric's show comes up tomorrow and it will be the end of the year, right? End of that. And then next week we get a new show. We don't know what it's gonna be called yet, what the logo is, but we're gonna have a new show coming from CIG. Actually, we do know what the new show is, but we'll hold that for later. And then we have the end of the next great Starship contest coming this weekend, right? Friday night, 6 o'clock, I believe. It's going to be a live show right from the uh, YouTube center, right? Wherever YouTube holds its stuff. And we're going to be able to see the last two teams, which are Four Horsemen and Shark Collective, compete against each other. Hopefully we'll see PBR models and final workings of them. I'm hoping they also show us what they said that they were going to do, which was to follow the design of the Mustang through to the end and we see the finalized Mustang but you know I guess I could pass up on that to see what the final results are after PBR is added to the two ships that the two teams have been creating for so long I can't wait 16 weeks it's been a long ride right Four, four months four months the show's been going on all right so that's a lot of what's been going on in the verse and for the rest of it I don't need that I'll just talk about some things. I, I made a realization this week, and the realization was quite drastically an eye-opener for me. The first thing that caught my eye in this game was Squadron 42. And it's mainly because I've played through all of Chris's space-based games, and also his one fighter-based game, the um, Strike Commander. And I love the way the stories are told. I love the branching um, storyline. And I love that there's a, you know, more ways, there's more than one way to win and more than one way to fail. And I started to play a game called Elite Dangerous, which we've talked about before. I've shared pictures of it up here. And I haven't really jumped into the beta yet because something else happened. And I, I just was lost because the storyline wasn't there. Well, Somewhere along the line, I was in the Origin launcher from uh, EA, and way back when the first pre-patched version of SimCity 5 came out and the debacle it was, they gave us free games, right? And because back then I primarily had a Mac, I took Mass Effect thinking I'd play it, and I never did. I took Mass Effect 3. Well... I'm sitting there going, am I going to play more World of Tanks? Am I going to load up Elite Dangerous? What am I going to do? And at that point, I didn't have the Elite Dangerous beta, which just came online on Friday. I had the Elite Dangerous uh, Alpha 1, which only let me do a couple of missions, which I did many times and, you know, I was bored with. So I loaded up Mass Effect 3 and I got sucked in. 
Then I started watching Lady Sinea. That's Lady Sinea. That's her Twitch page. I go to her Twitch page and watch her. And she was playing through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 and uh, going Renegade. So I decided, you know, eh, the trilogy is only $30. What the hell? Excuse my language. Let me go in and purchase that. And what I realized by starting to play Mass Effect is that I really do like this well-told storyline. And that's one of the reasons I really, really, really like, um, or I'm really looking forward to Squadron 42. Why am I saying this? Well, there's a lot of people out there, not in our community, maybe some in our community, and Ars Technica did an article about it, um, how Elite Dangerous is pushing forward and Star Citizen is still back. And I think the reason behind it is that it's easy to put out a game and to put out those modules and get everything out there. And not easy, easier. There's nothing easy about Elite Dangerous. It's a gorgeous game. And David Braben has done an amazing job bringing back one of my most favorite games from the 80s. Um, it, it's a lot easier to make that when you don't have to worry about continuity and storytelling and assets that you have to create to make this game. Squadron 42 is first and foremost the number one thing on the minds of everybody at CIG. Yes, they're bringing us out to the Arena Commander to give us something to do while they're finishing up this awesome, this groundbreaking game that we're going to be able to play. But Squadron 42 is the baby that that Chris is trying to nurture and, and, and help to grow into what is going to be the best game we've ever played. The player universe, Star Citizen, is a byproduct of that rich game that we're going to be given. But the game has to come before the universe because there's things in that game that are going to direct us to what to do in the universe. Playing through the game is how you gain citizenship in the universe thus increasing your reputation, getting lower prices on things at different markets, and other benefits that we don't know about right now. You don't have to play the game to play the player universe, but that's one of the things that are going on. Also, there's a lot more to the game. There's socializing, there's first-person shooting, there's meeting your friends in a first-person body, being, you know, where you're rendered as a first-person, having the Moby Glass. There's so much in our game that we're here for that is going to make it take a longer amount of time, more time to create than a game like Elite, which on its own is a wonderful game. It's just not as dynamic and full featured as the game that we're going to be playing here in the Star Citizen world, right? Well, and it, yeah, it took Mass Effect for me to see that. I am excited about the next week. I'm excited about the next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And Sunday to Saturday of next week, I am off. So please, guys, get Arena Commander out so I have time to kick some butt and get ready for my number to be called in the multiplayer universe. Got two more things to talk about. First thing is, ladies of the round table. All right, Carmen, Shivasta, Pixie, Bonks, three girls have invited me to help host Ladies of the Round Table. It's a weekly show on Fridays and Friday nights that airs on Twitch. We don't have a lot of viewers right now. We need to have a lot of viewers. Those girls are kick butt. They're amazing, playing everything from first person shooters to MMOs to MOBAs. And Pixie is a MOBA queen. They are amazing and they could take on any of you guys that watch the show in any of those games. And I'm getting them into Star Citizen. Believe me, they are going to be in our game and having fun. Read up on Ladies of the Round Table. A lot of it has to do with getting scholarship for children and helping other people that need help. Okay? It's a wonderful place, wonderful group of girls, and I'm honored to be part of them. Thank you very much. Last thing was, months ago here on this program, I think back in January, February, I started talking about Rocket, Rush, Rushus. I called him Roculus, Rushus. His wife, Julie, Save My Wife, was one of the threads here, has come down with non-alcoholic liver disease or NASH syndrome, right? So I put out the um, fundraiser on the show a few times and they got some traction. And then some of you PM'd me saying that you didn't want to see it every show. And then I let it go and didn't do anything for a while. It's important that we as a community show 
solidarity, so that we take care of one another. When Eric goes on Wingman's Hangar and says he's raising money for somebody, you know, for his, through his child for some um, not citizen related person, we give oodles and oodles of money. But when I, myself and other people like Dr. Hawk and uh, Zombie and, you know, Mufasa, Kin Shadow, I could go on Logante, come and ask you, we don't get the same buy-in. Rusus is a citizen, he's part of the community, he's one of us. And his wife, who is the mom to children, needs our help. So there's a bunch of us, and we call ourselves the Star Citizen Motley Collective. <laughs> um, we have gotten together and we've shot one video in the past, and you guys liked it or hated it, big deal. We make corny videos that are over the top corny, kind of like airplane-ish, but they're fun, right? This one we did, and I'm gonna play it in just here in a moment before we go into a confession of a star citizen. And we are going to, um, we, we, we put this video together to gain some more traction because Julie's about ready to have her surgery. In fact, she probably already had it. And I'm just trying to do that last push to help them, not just me, but everybody. And I want you guys to share this video. It'll be out there in some way, shape or form at some point on its own to try to bring some, you know, help to them. They're one of us and they need us. And that's all I have to say about that. So stay, stay tuned for this video that we put together. And let me tell you, there's a lot of work that went into here. There are, you know, there were people spanning from all over this country and Europe that took part in this film. Everything from playing parts in it, editing it, putting the music score together, getting animations together. This was a big project, it wasn't tiny. And although it's only six minutes, think about how many people that are never meeting in the same place are only talking through chat inside of, or um, a message board inside of the RSI website. Think about that. That's the media by which we spoke and came up with ideas. And then this, what you're about ready to see, is what we came up with. I'm proud of it. Very proud of it. In fact, more proud of the people that took part in it than the actual finished product. Thank you all. I've been talking too much about that. I will be back, hopefully, on Monday or Tuesday with another episode, episode 30. And I'm hoping that one is going to be epic because we are going to have huge things to talk about. We're going to have episode 72 of Wingman's Hangar to talk about. We are going to have the end of the first season of the next great starship to talk about. We are going to have the Arena Commander release to talk about. And I'm sure that there is going to be something else big to talk about. Thank you all. I'll talk to you soon. And be safe out there. All ships. Yes, again. Didn't we save him like a few weeks you ago me. already? Please respond. Yes, what's your situation? We've picked up something from Shoreleaf on Nemo system. The Nemo system? Leech fever! Oh. Quickly! To the pilot yeah. seat! Can't function. Ship is adrift. Please send help. Anybody can hear me. Please send help. We need medical supplies. We need oxygen. My god, we're low on oxygen. Hold on tight, we're coming to get you! Marcus, out! Ima, open a channel to bed goal. High priority! I can't wait to be playing that game. Arena Commander, that sounds so fun. A break-in on a commercial? Dr. One Hawk? One of the most dangerous diseases in the UEE today is Lynch Fever. This is the illness that every citizen and civilian hopes and prays that they will never face. To investigate this further, we review the case of citizen Rusia's wife, Julie, who contracted the disease and the Goss system. As it is in currently stage two, to recover the patient would require heavy treatment and surgery, which is both expensive and currently not yet covered by any insurance companies. How oh, horrible. Marcus, Sarzu. Bad girl, moments ago we received a distress call. It's Jess. We are on our way to pick him up in the Nemo system. High probability of lynch <gasps> fever. What can I do to help? We need advice on how to handle the situation. 
at medical facilities uh, to take care of him once uh, we've retrieved them. I'll make the necessary arrangements. There goes that day of playing Arena Commander. Oh, get back to me once you have them. Thanks in advance. Movers, out. Only one person could help. Dr. Hawk. Open channel to Dr. Hawk. Dr. Hawk here. How can I help you? Hello, Dr. Hawk. One of our friends has come down with Lynch fever. Can you take care of his treatment? If you bring him to my clinic, I can waive the costs of my staff, but unfortunately that still leaves a hefty sum required for the needed supplies. As well, we would also need to find a suitable organ donor or compatible organ for him, uh, neither of which I have. So the best thing you can do at the moment is bring him to me. Thanks, Dr. Hawk. I'll get right on it. Where to get those organs? <laughs> Zombie could help. I have so many friends. Zombie receiving. Zombie, our friend Jazz Arrow came down with Lynch disease, and, well, we need you to get some, uh, will you be able to help? Zombie Donnie held the organs from private stash for failing organs. Great. I'll tell the movers to get him over to Dr. Hawks. I'll provide the funds. You meet us there as soon as you have them. Set course for the Falcon system. Oh, Marcus, Sarzu. Sarzu, yeah? We've picked up Jess and his crew and put them under quarantine. Don't ask how we did it, but it involved boxes and Egyptian cotton. Where can we take him? Rendezvous at Dr. Hawks Clinic in the Falcon system. Affirmative. Move us out. I'll see you there. This is Kinsha. Drop your shield and surrender your booty. That's your booty, but, you know, you loot. Give me your power! Ken Shadow, your dashing reputation precedes you. I've heard it all before, lady. Flattery will get you nowhere. Surely you're a pirate with a heart. I'm on a mission vital to the survival of several people. Your kind words have melted the cold heart of this pirate. Not. Your compassion is contemptible. Give me your cargo or I will drift you. This Connie is more than a match for that cutlass. I won't go down so easy, you know. I hope your shields are up to spec. Identify uh, constellation. Proceed with your mission. I'll handle this. Now you are mine, but goddamn. You've had your last laugh at my expense. No one gives me expired coupons. No one! You really need to chill out, Kinshada. Dude, go smoke a hookah. You shot this hookah so far up your In the verse, you can't plan for everything or handle every situation thrown your way. Even if you think you have it all under control, sometimes you run into a bad patch or get sick and you just need a little help. At moments like this, a healthy community helps its own. Not because we have to, but because at our core we all want to help our fellow citizens. Today we ask your attention to help one of our citizens out there, Rauschus, whose wife came down with NASH, non-alcoholic liver disease. So if you can find it in your hearts to help out, we would really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you too can help our fellow citizens.